Foot Clan, it's a big week. We got three Saturday games. We got all the Sunday slate, and this is your championship time. We got starts of the week on the show today. We're going to break down a bunch of the matchups and get you ready to win that hashtag Foot Clan title. Before we start today's show, we have a special and important message from NHTSA. Look, you know the risks of driving drunk. There could be a crash. People could get hurt. People could be killed. You could get arrested. You can incur huge legal expenses and possibly even lose your job. You know the consequences of driving drunk, and you're wrong if you think it's no big deal. Remember, drive sober or get pulled over. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's not football time. Oh, you're right. Came in a little late, as yeah. I remembered. But it is not football time today, Andy. No, we're, we're not doing Thursday. Well, we're doing Thursday night football. Just not. They've moved the day. Oh, is it still called? It's called Thursday night football on Saturday. I believe that is factual, even though it is very confusing. Correct. Yeah, because of the day of the week. Yeah, that's just something you remember when you used to watch TGIF on Mondays. That was, oh, that was, was super the fun. Best day of the week. Thank yeah. goodness it's Friday, Monday. <laughs> Welcome into the show, Thursday, December nineteenth. Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, with you. A big bear, cardboard, cardboard bear, hanging out. We've got week. 16 fantasy forecast today. We'll talk about the three Saturday games that we have on the docket. Just a little bit of uh, time, I guess, opportunity to still get your pre-Sunday tilt in, depending oh, yeah. on what happens. Certainly. They I didn't take I, that away from you this I week. need no time at all. To tilt? To tilt. Like I'm. Takes no, no, one play. It's built in. One play by an opposing team's player that goes well and your your season's over it is worth noting uh, with with no jesting here that that okay so you're used to the thursday night process you set your lineup blah 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 but that's out of the way now you're not used to the saturday games and the worst thing that could happen to you is you forget to set your lineup or check it uh saturday morning in a championship week so make sure you set it now and make sure you move all your Saturday players out of the flex and move them into your running back and wide receiver where you expect them to play so you don't get caught off guard. Because you will forget come well, Saturday morning. Like If you're on the West Coast, it's a pretty early game. I mean, for us, it's 11 o'clock, the first game. Yeah. That's easy to get caught off guard. Do you, you even wake up by 11, Jay? On a Saturday? Probably not. I have kids. Of course I do. Yeah, I know. The kids are dumb. Thank you for that. <laughs> Twitter at the FF Ballers. TheFantasyFootballers.com got the start sit tool. If you have a question about your lineup, you need some help, check that out. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash TheFantasyFootballers. And a reminder, the 2019 Foot Clan title shirt is up at ShotBallers.com. You can celebrate if you've already won. You can you can call your shot if you haven't won yet. Or at least, you know, put it in your cart. Get ready to go so mm -hmm. you can brag. You want to brag for the maximum amount of days. That's all I'm saying is you want to be able to gloat, brag, be the king or queen mm -hmm. of your league for the maximum amount of calendar days because it, it it's what gives you joy. Yeah, for sure. And what I recommend if you are in that boat once you win is that you follow that up with a victory the next year because that maximizes your days. Do what I do. Mm, I see. Yeah. You're, you're preparing yourself to win a second consecutive Dynasty League title? Yes, I am. Yeah, if you don't have the shirt yet, you can draw, like get the graphic, pull it up on your screen, draw it on your chest, and then wait for the shirt to come in. Yep. That's permitted. We allow that. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. All right, there are actually three really big storylines that we need to talk about. The first one yesterday, I won't say it came as a complete surprise because we knew he was dealing with injury, but... I, I was we surprised. I think we expected him to play. Josh Jacobs, Raiders running back, rookie. He's been ruled out already for week 16. So in, in some ways, this is like a blessing to know. Now, right, you find out on a Wednesday 
that Josh Jacobs is out. You don't find out like Sunday morning, which could easily have happened. Yes. But week 16 against the Chargers, the Raiders won't have Jacobs. Right, which means uh, DeAndre Washington becomes a great play. He's probably around running back 20 this week, which means he's a guy that will be started in most situations. If you need a flex play, you know, you lose Chris Goblin and you've got a good wide receiver backup, you, you lose out on your flex. Now, great. You Hopefully, DeAndre Washington is available to you. Could have very well been dropped after Josh Jacobs came back in to the lineup. And then this last week, we said, you know, you can drop – handcuffs we did warn people don't drop handcuffs where the starter is somewhat injured for situations like this but yeah DeAndre Washington is going to be a great play this week that's I have him a little bit lower than RB20 right now but I agree that's probably about where he belongs Dalvin Cook Adam Schefter reporting he is unlikely to suit up in week 16 against the Packers I have not thought he would suit up in week 16 against the Packers on Monday night so this is the most difficult situation to wade through, but I believe we have decent clarity now compared to a couple of days ago. The sources that I trust out of Minnesota have not even cracked the door open about Alexander Madison playing in this football game. They don't believe it's going to happen. They didn't believe it on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And Dalvin Cook is unlikely to play, and this is a Monday night football game. So... How confident are you that Mike Boone's the starter and where does he slot in this week if he is the starter? You right. know, we just talked about Jacobs being around running back 20. Yeah, right now um, I, I'm very confident that, it, that Boone will be the starter. The problem is you have to weigh that confidence against the downside of a Monday night football game of being wrong. You know, it's, I, I'm, I'm the same confident level. You know, I'm, I'm 80% confident that Boone is the starter for the Minnesota Vikings, but I would be uh, fine with that confidence level on a Sunday morning game where I could pivot right then to any of my other options should that not happen morning of. You have got to have some backup plan still with that 20% variable in there come Monday night, but I do believe he, he plays, and as far as assuming he is the starter, where is he? He's right around the same. I would play DeAndre Washington over Boone. Uh, personally, I think you will see a little bit of C.J. Ham, a little bit of uh, Amir Abdullah, and we're not sure the pass catching work that Boone will be involved in. He very well could dominate. It's ironic because th you're saying what you're saying, and I you know what I have pulled up on my screen is what the Week 14 Oakland snap counts were mm -hmm. to to kind of illustrate the same thing. Because Amir Abdullah is going to get some passing down work. Jalen Richard was a 38 percent snap player in Week 14 when Jacobs was out. Washington was 63 percent. So, uh, do you think that it will be similar for Boone and the other options that Boone's out there sixty plus percent of the time? Yeah, I think it'll be similar. The question is just where Pat, where where do the receptions go for both teams? Jalen Richard's been the pass catching back, you know, on on certain situations. But when DeAndre Washington was out there, he was utilizing that role. He was actually running routes and very involved in the passing game. We hope Boone does that for uh, for Minnesota, but we just haven't seen it yet. I feel slightly more confident in Boone myself than DeAndre Washington, and you like Washington a little bit more. So both in that 20 range right now, um, we know Washington has the job. We don't know definitively that Boone does, but all signs are pointing that direction. I have not been able to find one ounce of positive uh, momentum for Madison returning. Have you seen anything at all? I have seen. And I have a, scoured. I have seen nothing that he is okay. And if uh, certain rumors are to be believed, and it, and it makes complete sense with the timeline of completely missing, not being remotely uh, questionable to play, you question the high ankle sprain. And if it is a high ankle sprain for Alexander Madison, he's not playing this week without a shred of doubt. And it really is. I mean, it's a, hugely disappointing that he's not, because you you. He was the highest value handcuff All in year. football the entire year, and then he's hurt during the one time you need him. He's throwing away a shot. That's mm, all I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, talk to me, Jason, because I know you've been knee-deep in this. You liked Michael Gallup as a potential start of the week candidate, but the Dak Prescott news has gotten progressively worse. Yeah. That is, it's, he it's, had an MRI on his shoulder. It's it, hard for him to function. The MRI came back clean which is great news. He, he didn't tear anything. 
Um, so long term, Dak is absolutely fine. The issue here is whether or not it's an AC joint sprain or whether it's worse than that. And if it's worse than that, if if the swelling could prohibit Dak from being able to play or if he plays being uh, accurate. A high-value passer. Exactly. I mean, you look at – so Pro Football Doc, he uh, is one of the more respected uh, analysts out there. He believes this is a very severe injury that will limit Dak. So that's that's one opinion out there from a doctor. I'm not a doctor, but then you also have some some of the the things that happen where uh, you know Michael Gallup came out and said that Dak said to him in the game that he's not going to throw on an RPO no matter what the read is because he couldn't. I mean that now yesterday you have the backup taking first team reps. There's a lot of smoke here, and I cannot fathom Dak Prescott not playing against the Eagles in the most important game of the year. He will be out there. He's tough, but I, I'm, you know, Michael Gallup. I came into this morning with Gallup as my start of the week because the Philly secondary is great, and I think Amari Cooper is a little banged up. So I loved Gallup, and now I'm not putting my championship. Not to say you can't start Gallup, but. It there contains new risk. New risk. He's not going to be my start of the week. This is the first time that Dak Prescott has ever been a limited participant in practice in his entire career. Cooper Rush taking the majority of those snaps. So it's concerning. And it's a it's a tough divisional game. And even if you just, you know, you just can't pencil in any of these defenses to kind of play to their template in a divisional matchup. We've seen it time and time again. Even if he was healthy, you know, it, it would still be a variable of that divisional battle, and now you've got the shoulder. So Gerald Everett did practice in full on Wednesday. He's been dealing with a knee injury. Sean McVay was very strange about his kind of discussion on Everett, whether he's part of the game plan or not. This will hurt Tyler Higby owners if Everett is active. If you had Tyler Higby, would you right now pick up Hollister as a pivot? Not a, not a well. I'm fine with him as a pivot. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. I'd be fine replacing him and not thinking about it again. Yeah. So does that mean if Everett is active, you would play Hollister over Higby? Certainly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They're close enough to where I don't think that it's a bad call to play Hollister over Higby anyway. I think that the upside of Arizona's defense, Seattle being at home, Arizona giving up two touchdowns to Ricky Seals Jones last week to just. You know, we were starting to say San Francisco and Seattle were giving up points, and they were like, hold on. Yeah, we got to fix don't this. Don't forget about us. So if you don't want to even think about whether Everett's back and you have Hollister, then that's fine with me. All right, a reminder, Sunday Live, one hour before kickoff, all the latest game day alerts, news, notes, updates, and actives, actives, all of that. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Do not miss a single piece of impactful fantasy football news. You can download the free app today. Jason, it's time to get into the forecast. Oh, let's do it. Fantasy forecast. The 9-5 and five Texans take on the red-hot, severely depleted Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We're sitting at 7-7. Seven and seven. Texans are three-point favorites. It's in Tampa. It's a nice 49-point over-under. And the one thing that we know going into this game is that Houston has a tendency to give up a lot of points to opposing passing games. They're a wonderful matchup. Just ask Drew Locke. They have the fifth most passing yards allowed, the fourth most fantasy points given up to opposing wide receivers over the last month. However, Tampa Bay, who has been putting up massive yardage and touchdown numbers, will be severely limited in the options that they have in the passing game. There was a quote, and I'm, I don't have the exact quote, but I'll summarize, where Winston basically told Cameron Bray and O.J. Howard, look, you guys are getting the rock. And then Bruce Arians came out and said, Peyton Barber and uh, Ronald Jones need to get the rock. Mm -hmm. And then, but, but in the passing game. In the passing game, correct. Uh, thank you for clarifying because they need somebody to catch the ball. Yeah, Arians was saying they'll use the backs more with their limited weapons. Then 
I was really entertained by this. You know, the, the existing options on the team at wide receiver, Brashad Perryman, who is a must start this week, in my opinion. Um, we have him as the consensus wide receiver 20. Uh, he's also part of the majority of the most popular start sit questions this week. People wanting to know Perryman or A.J. Brown. Brown. Perryman or Terry McLaurin. I think I would go Perryman. And then, I, and then Perryman or Cooper Cup, which we talked about a lot on the show yesterday. Yeah, I was Cup. You were Perryman, I believe. Yeah, and then Perryman or somebody like Anthony Miller, who has been on fire, but you know they play Kansas City this week. Yeah, it's not the greatest matchup. I probably lean Perryman there. Yeah, I do as well. But you've got Justin Watson, superstar Justin Watson. Did you see <laughs> offensive coordinator Byron Leftwich when he was asked if it was so wonderful and deadpan? Did you see this, Brooks? I Oh yeah, I needed to look into. It. I didn't get. I I know the you saw outcome. the video now. No, I have not seen oh, the video. Oh gosh, you got to watch the video. They basically uh, took the opportunity to ask at a press conference, offensive coordinator Byron Leftwich. Um, look, we've heard. Uh, what, what's a compa- Is there any comparison to the way that just you know Justin Watson plays compared to Mike Evans? We've heard the comparisons. Is there any comparison at all? Long pause. Nope. Nope. Nope, no disrespect to Jay Watt, but nope. Nope, no comparison. <laughs> well, and in fairness, it's one of the better wide receivers in the National Football League. I mean, of course there's no comparison. Didn't you bring that up, though, his own comment about that? Like trying to do what Evans does out there with I Justin Watson? I, I don't no, remember th- that's what it came out Evans' of. name. Maybe it was Watson himself had compared himself to Evans. That was the best part of it. Yeah. Anyways, Justin Watson is actually in consideration uh, as a flyer this week in the same way that you would look at, I don't know, wide receiver options outside of DJ Chark in Jacksonville. I don't really see any difference in starting Chris Conley or Justin Watson at all. Yeah, the the uh, the interesting thing here is that Justin Watson was running in the slot once Godwin went out. We talked up the whole offseason. Bruce Arians and that big slot receiver – is such an important role. Obviously, the second half when Godwin was out, a lot of those drives were quote-unquote killed by Brashad Perryman over-the-top bomb touchdowns. Um, so, you know, but but that's the role. Like, I wanted to know who's going to go into Godwin's role, and it appears to be Justin Watson, so he is in play. I worry, though. I, I, I we, we talked about it early. I will, you know... I wish I had the crystal ball to know if Jameis can actually overcome losing two of the best weapons in the NFL and still slinging it for a ton. You know, there's about a 50% chance of rain in this game, some 13 mile an hour winds, which aren't scary. But you know, if it's a little, if it's a little windy and a little rainy, and you don't have your main guys, I am. Let worried. me ask you this question then to help clarify: Do you believe that Deshaun Watson and company, DeAndre Hopkins, Will Fuller, Kenny Stills? are going to put points up against a Tampa Bay defense, 26th against quarterbacks, 32nd against wide receivers, and 29th against tight ends. Yes. So James is going to have to try. That's all I'm saying. I Look, you can be scared because he's only one half of that reception equation. He gets to throw the football. Sometimes it's to the other team. Sometimes it's to Brashad Perryman who catches the ball at a 44% clip on the year. We brought this up yesterday. But he's going to have to try. He's going to be put in a position. Look, they're underdogs in a 49-point over-under. So Jameis Winston is going to throw the football. The question is, Is can the receivers get open? Can they do what they need to do? It gives me enough confidence in Brashad Perryman as a wide receiver, too, this week, the fact that the volume is going to be there. Yeah, I mean, I know we've we've got the decision of whether or not to play Jameis, and we have, as of now, decided to play him. So if that gives you out there confidence. Um... Well, that's all relative to options. So what are our other options? Well, we have Josh Allen. Yeah, Josh Allen. So it's more of a Ryan Fitzpatrick, a ceiling floor play here. I like Winston to overcome. I want him to overcome as well. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not just it helps for our team in League One, but uh, I just think that this this entire offense, this this winning streak they're on, is predicated on Winston. All right, Ronald Jones and Peyton Barber in the backfield. Do you have any confidence in them? If you, you know. We bring them up each and every week with annoyance in our voices. I have no confidence. I, Even with some maybe reception upside there? Yep. 
Okay. Yeah, because who's the reception upside for Andy? You, you really, yeah, you don't know. You can't really start these guys in your championship game. No, you, you, you can start these guys in your best ball league after they score well and get in your lineup <laughs> because it's a best ball league. That's the only place you can start. Whoever you start's going to be wrong. I'm not. I'm not playing with the Tampa Bay backfield. And then Carlos Hyde. Do you sit him again? You know, Tampa's had this illustrious running defense because they're so friendly everywhere else. But they only give up 14.4 fantasy points per game. Hyde has been very good of late. Um, yeah, this. this what, do you, is, what do you do? This is easy for me. I'm not playing Carlos Hyde here at all. I'm not playing Duke Johnson. Um, th this is a wide receiver quarterback game where you want those pieces. Maybe you could throw tight ends in the mix, obviously, with O.J. Howard, Cameron Brait. Um, Darren Fells hasn't done much of late, but this is you know one where you expect a lot of points scored, according to Vegas. So, yeah, I mean, the biggest question mark here, because I think most people are uh, outside of the people we've talked about, everyone is starting Hopkins, everyone's starting Watson. Everyone's if, starting Perryman, pretty much. Yes, that's what it seems like. But it's Will Fuller. So on the footcats yesterday, we were kind of joking about why is everybody so up in arms about Will Fuller, who has two out of his ten games been good and eight out of his ten games been horrifically bad for fantasy. And I'm starting to come around. I'm like, man, but... You know, one of those games was a game where you could see coming. It was just a perfect matchup where it's like, you know he's going to be bombing out uh, deep passes against a bad secondary, and that's what's going to be happening here. Yeah, I mean, I like the fact that Fuller came back from the injury and played on 94% of snaps. I like the seven targets. He had a couple of uh, touchdowns go Still's way and not Fuller's way. So it's not that full. I, I think what had been strange to us is that the comparisons that were being brought up, the start sits for Fuller were with like smash play options. Yeah. And it was like surprising that people were considering him. You know, I'm going to play Will Fuller over Justin Watson. No doubt about it. No question against Tampa Bay. Like that is not even a thought process for me. But do you play Will Fuller over Anthony Miller? No. No, I don't. You I'm, I'm going to go with the targets, which have been there for Fuller. The problem has just been for, what you said. It's it's been the hit rate. Miller. Yeah, they've been there for Miller. The hit rate on Fuller has been almost never. So, um, O.J. Howard, I love him. I think you can play O.J. Howard. He's one of the only, dare I say, reliable pass-catching options still part of the starting lineup. Yeah, I mean, if, if you look at tight ends this week and you say, okay, you know, do you think that O.J. Howard will have – Top eight receptions at tight end, uh, that's a 100% yes for me. He will get the targets and the receptions uh, and with his size and strength and capabilities has just as good an option to get a touchdown as anybody else. So, yeah, I'm, I'm in on O.J. Howard, and, and I don't think, you know, with all the talking about O.J. Howard, I don't think that means we can ignore Cameron Bray either, who I believe had seven targets last week. I choose to ignore him. Okay. Well, you could choose just because I can't envision a situation where you needed to pay attention to him this week. So Cameron Even Braid is more of the get in the way of OJ Howard and annoy you. Type. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it's, that. It's, he will. You talked about Howard having a top eight reception week. The touchdowns will end up in Cameron Braid's hands, yeah, and we'll all be disappointed. Will. All right, we want to thank today's sponsors, and that means we're going to talk about fantasy champs. Look, Foot Clan, you've made it to the end of the season. You've put in your time. You put in your effort. Now you need to put in the effort to find the very best, the very, the very grandest. Is that the the Gra most grand? Grandiosest is grandiosest. The word you were for. Yes, your league's trophy, so that it can represent your true greatness, Jason. You're, you're, That's you're on a the cusp. big trophy, then. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, you're getting the tallest one. So listen, you can upgrade your league with an epic 19-year perpetual trophy or championship belt. From fantasychamps.com. But here's what they got going this on. This is really cool. This is way. super cool. You get a free, right now, with a special code, you get a free blinged out championship ring. That is a $60 value. You Here's how you do it. You put in your trophy or your belt into your cart. You add the ring, and then you use the promo code free ring. And it will take that $59 out of the cart, but you get the ring. Yeah, because people are always like, well, should I get a trophy or should I get a ring? Now both. Why not the both? Why not both? Victory never felt so good at fantasychamps.com. And we want to thank Noom, a uh, new sponsor. Look, getting in yes. shape, it's, it's not just about losing weight. It's about 
feeling better about yourself, whether that means having energy, you know, keep up with the kids, keep up with the busy life, or fitting into uh, those those good genes. Yeah. That that was my goal. I, I got Noom. I downloaded. I went through. They've got this really cool thing where you you put in what matters to you. My goal was I wanted to go down one one pant one pant size. Yeah, no, I'm that's gonna, a it's a good goal. Thank you. I'm gonna get there because Noom is about habit changing. You know, it's not just uh you know no food is specifically good or bad or off limits. Instead, Noom teaches moderation by helping you track the meal habits, visualize portion sizes, see calorie density at a glance. It can even be used in conjunction with a lot of the pre-existing popular diets. Th- this is basically about forming the right habits and making sure that you are good to go with the new you. Making sure that, you know, look, this is this is the holiday season. You might really need Noom through this it's holiday an, season. It's I an know important I time. Yeah, good, so get into good habits. You don't have to change it all in one day. Small steps make big progress. Sign up for your trial at Noom. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash footballers. What do you have to lose? Visit Noom dot com slash footballers to start your trial today. That's Noom dot com slash footballers. The last weight loss program you'll need. All right, the Bills at 10-4 and 4 take on the 11-3 and 3 Patriots. This is really fun and exciting unless you play fantasy football that's how i feel about this game <laughs> yeah i look at this and i say wow the bills with a win in new england which again they're they're six and a half point underdogs it's just a 36 and a half point um over under but you're in a position here where the bills could tie the patriots with the same record the best record of the division patriots are six and a half point favorites if i had a Jason Moore's almost upset of the week. This would be my this would be my play. In New England? In New England. Man. Andy's almost upset of the week. We can we can share it. Let's uh, both go this direction. And it's not to say that look, it's an almost upset for a reason. I think the game's closer than six and a half points. But bringing it back to fantasy. You know, you're not touching Tom Brady. And you no. sure as heck, you, you know, jo- Josh Allen? No, I'm not pressing that stallion drop, Brooks. I'm not doing it. It's not excellent this week for Josh Allen against the Patriots he'll defense. Be, he'll be fine. He'll be good enough to be, if you have to start him in a <sighs> league and you've got a good roster elsewhere, I think you'll be fine because of his rushing. He'll I don't get know. a rushing touchdown this week because he just about always seems to. Unless he plays New England. I mean, he was at home against New England. He scored single-digit fantasy points at the quarterback position. It was the only dud of the year. I, th- I, I just I, don't think he gets it done in New England. I think he's okay, but I still would rather not start him. There's you know, 10, 12, 13 other guys that I would rather start because you have a higher upside. I'm starting a Fitzpatrick. Over- I was just trying to temper your fine, what fine means, because we have him ranked outside the top 20. That's not fine. Fine means to me that he's going to have in a six-point – uh, scoring format, he's going to have 17 points. So he's not going to crush you. He's not going to go out there and dud with five. I don't believe – now, He this is – the Patriots have done that to plenty of other quarterbacks. 17 come out. would be double what he got against them last time. Yeah, and that's okay. that's what I truly think will happen. I am staying away from both quarterbacks. I am staying away from – like James White is, I think, fine. I think it's a that's a good flexy play. But I don't – Really want to mess with Sony Michelle? I mean, last week was nineteen for eighty nine. Congratulations, Sony! And you can beat Buffalo. You're a real boy on the ground. They've gotten much better as the years gone along, but they they are weaker on the ground than they are with their excellent uh, passing coverage. So Sony is he's somewhat in play as you know. If you're in a standard league, Sony's much more exciting because you're not getting points for receptions. And good news, he doesn't get them. Yeah, and the Bills, the, the rushing defense has really improved over the last handful of weeks. They're now in the top half in that place, and these are two of the best defenses in the league. Singletary or Sonny Michel, who would you rather play? Singletary. Singletary's the better player. I He's agree. He's just been outstanding week in and week out. He, not necessarily for fantasy. You might be looking at just the, the fantasy points scored and say, oh, he, you know, he had a somewhat down week last week. But he was still outstanding in, in real life, and I'm going to bet on those players when you're talking at this this level of, you know. I'm still try. I still wish, like I'd play Mike Boone over Devin Singletary. Me too. Yeah, that, that's so people need that question answered. 
both of these players are going to be, I think, in the category of volume gets you enough to make you not cry, but you're not smiling. Yeah, the the biggest question in this game to me, and it's it's a massive one, it's a scary one because this is a player who's gotten you here. Let me read you some snap counts. 97%, 92%, 98%. You see how the snap counts work? Yeah, they're very high. He's in every play. And then 62%. That's Julian Edelman last week dealing with an injury in his knee that, oh, no, he's fine, but not really. I think he's really dealing with a, a, a significant injury. He's tough. He's playing through it. But he wasn't good last week, and now this is championship week. I don't know. Like, you bring it up in the right context. He's a player that's gotten you here. I don't really know if I can bench him if he's active. They've got nothing. They've got nothing out of their other wide receiving options. The trade for Mohamed Sanu has been a flop of flops. Brady has not been able to find a connection consistently with the other wide receivers. And if they're going to hold on to this division, it's going to be in Edelman's hands. Now, it's a terrible matchup. I just don't know if I can bench him is my point. I think yeah. he's a wide receiver two to wide receiver three option this week against a terrible matchup. Yeah, I think I can bench him. I mean, Really? I, I, You're I, making a note over there that, that has probably put Edelman down. Yes, I am. Um, the The reality is, I mean, what did he have? Two, two receptions for nine yards last week. And if he's dealing with this injury combined with a great defense across the field, you know, can he be fine, especially in full PPR leagues? Sure. But I'm not going to bet that this is a game he gets in the end zone. I'm not going to bet this is the game where he ends up over 100 yards. I'm no, not, you're right. You know, so now and what there is, is the injury risk. I mean, he has a tendon in his left knee that's damaged, more severe than people originally thought, so you have added risk of leaving early. Yes. But, you know, it's just tough to do. It, it is tough to do, and it's a matter of your other options because, I, you know, it's. I'm not going to start Will Fuller over Julian. You're Edelman. not. Unless, unless if, if I'm playing a real – Superstar, you know, I I came in. You're not with the favorite. Seven wins, and I got to the championship, and I'm going up against the juggernaut team who's been outstanding. That that's a game I would play Will Fuller over Julian Edelman because I don't think Julian Edelman's ceiling is here this week. This is why I want to add some like we have our start sit tool, <clears throat> but that's so binary, right? And it's right, and we don't that we we don't give binary responses on the show. There's context to every decision. Yeah, and so I want I know we've talked about this, and putting it out there is is dangerous, but. I know we want to add some like you know some variable setting options in the start sit tool where look if you're a team going in and you want upside your answer might be a little bit different. That's the truth. Yeah, 100%. I mean, a Brashad yeah. Perryman or a Will Fuller just plain has way more upside than a Julian Edelman who's been a super consistent player but on a PPR basis and now plays a terribly difficult uh matchup. Yeah. So John Brown on the other side. I really don't I don't either. I'm not going to try to play him. I would, I would play Edelman over Brown. Yeah. And then uh, very unkindly, uh, Editor-in-Chief Kyle made a little note in our doc for Ben Watson. Now, there's no note for Dawson Knox. No, but Dawson Knox is a rookie. You don't know a lot about him. He's been okay. He might have a bright future. Might not. No, his note actually says note. Right. So there's nothing. Nothing. But then on Ben Watson's side, in all capitals, it says old as dirt. Yeah, that's mean. That's not very nice. That's not that's not nice, and I think Dirt is older than him, but yeah, there aren't many tight ends that are. And uh, Papa Josh, but otherwise, right? Papa Josh, Dirt, Dirt, both older than Ben Watson. Nothing. But that's else. it. That's it. That's end of list. <laughs> Terrible. All right, the last Saturday game: Rams, Forty Niners. This game's in San Francisco. Rams are eight and six. Forty Niners eleven and three. Uh, San Francisco beat the Rams in week six, 20 to seven in a game where the Rams offense managed to procure a mere 157 total yards. And that's such malarkey, such malarkey. They didn't. They you're, you're saying that's the high end. They procured 30 yards of offense when that game mattered. I'm. Correct. I mean, at the end of that game, we're playing against Cooper Cup, so we've got all eyes on Cooper Cup at, the, at this game, just context for when we're watching. Here's what happened. The defense is 40 yards away. Cooper Cup rolls out about eight, nine yards, is wide open in the middle of the field. Jared Goff just goes, okay, I'll, I'll give it to him. He's wide open. This is what the defense wants him to do. 
They tackle them about there, about the 10, 11 yard line, over and over and over. In the actual game part, nothing was done. The Rams looked completely overmatched by a team that has recently been looking a little overmatched. So wh- who are the real Rams? Uh, and now they play the 49ers, who's not looking overmatched? The real Rams are pretty close to their record. They're about that reliable. Eight and six, so a little better than... A than little bit better than 500 on reliability, but not much. And difficult to trust on the road against the 49ers here. You know, the 49ers have an opportunity battling with Seattle to still get the... You know, when they lose the division, they go from the one seed to the five seed. That's not, that's not a great situation. So, I like San Francisco. They're six and a half point favorites. It's a 45 point over under. And so that that's kind of the context for the the matchup. Now Raheem Mostert, you're starting him, right? Todd Gurley, you're starting him. The running backs, the starters, you can trust Mostert as an RB two. I think you can trust Mostert. I am a little, you know, th- th- this. Uh, you saw Mostert last week uh, take over the dominant role. Now as a as a team, they didn't put up that much. You weren't thrilled, but Mostert did get a touchdown and was okay. But when it comes to snap percentages, carries compared to Coleman, compared to Burita, he was the lead dog, and I expect him to keep that. And now you're going to a team that was just torched on the uh, on the ground, two different 100-yard rushers in Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott. I think Moster is a must-play. While Gurley has been so consistent, he has just been, you know, week in and week out. You look at our, uh, our consistency chart, I think I was talking to the producer Bor- Borland the other day about him versus someone else, and I, you know, I pivoted. I said I I'm a little worried about Gurley this week, and he sends me the consistency chart. He's like, "That's a lot of green. There's a lot of green in Gurley's consistency chart." But I am very worried about this matchup this week because Gurley gets right now 90 percent of whatever the Rams' running game gets. Like that's that's all him. But it's been since week ten. And that's a long time ago. That's seven games ago. Uh, or, or uh, no, I'm sorry, from week seven, um, a, a long time ago, that they haven't given up a top half performance to running backs. The Niners haven't. So is Todd Gurley a, a running back one this week? I don't think so. No, he's more of a you, – you're still going to play Todd Gurley over an Adrian Peterson level option, are you not? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the passing I mean, game involvement for Gurley, if he's on the field like he was last week, 96% of the time, he's going to get some work out of the backfield, especially with that pass rush. It's just not exciting. And that's just the way the matchup – like, you, would you play Mostert or Gurley? Yeah, I would play Mostert. Okay. What, would you not? I think I would, based on, uh, you know, Mostert scored in four straight, home game, big favorite, running well. I think, I think it's probably the right call, still involved in the passing game. Yeah, and, and last week you had uh, you know a garbage time touchdown for Gurley, and then he got the two point conversion, so his numbers look pretty good. But you know, again, it, he wasn't good last week. All right, uh, Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, Brandon Cooks on the Rams side, and then Emmanuel Sanders and Debo Samuel. Um, not a good week from San Francisco wide receivers last week. Not a good week from Rams wide receivers last week. Yes, Cooper Cup garbage timed him himself into forty one and a touchdown or whatever it was. But where are you with this matchup? Where are you with the is it a bounce back opportunity for Sanders and Samuel? Yeah, I I think uh both of these games are bounce back opportunities. Uh the we expect Richard Sherman to be back for the 49ers, but they're still still dealing with a couple of problems in their secondary. I'm I'm fine with Woods again. Um every wide receiver out there has some bad games and the Rams got shellacked and Woods didn't do much, but you know, the four previous games, he was a top 20 wide receiver. So I'm sticking with Woods then Cup. Would you play Woods over Emmanuel Sanders in the same game? Sanders according to Pro Football Focus has Ramsey as the matchup. It will depend where I think, you know, whether they have uh, him on him all game or these guys are moving around. Samuel kind of gets – Debo Samuel, that is, gets involved in the, you know, the screen game, gets involved in the, you know, 
into round game. Yeah, I, I would rather start Robert Woods in this matchup. I, I don't expect Ramsey to shadow either of those guys. I think Ramsey's going to uh, stay to his spot, and then Shanahan will move around his weapons to get them all somewhat involved in plus matchups. Again, I think it's a bounce-back week for for both wide receiving groups, but I don't think this is a smash play. I don't think either one is like a home run. I'm super excited to play Robert Woods. This is just a game where I think you're I think you're gonna be okay playing Robert Woods. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 with you Woods over Sanders. I, I do worry that, you know, if I'm if I'm the Rams, my strategy is make somebody other than Emmanuel Sanders beat me, which would mean probably sending Jalen Ramsey on a little traveling party. But we'll see. Uh Brandon Cooks don't even touch him. Don't even glance his direction. Something's he's not getting separation. I was watching snaps from last week. He's never open. It that's that's the it's not targets. It's not like an unwillingness. I mean, he had eight targets last week. He gets no separation right now. None. So concerning for yeah. a long term view of Brandon Cooks. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if he's out of shape because of the concussions and missing time, but it wasn't good. Tyler Higby, Gerald Everett talked about it at the top of the show. Higby's a smash play based on recency of what the 49ers have given up if he's alone. And then Kittle, you just play Kittle. Yeah, you're going to play him. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Grizz, yeah, agrees. Giants, 49ers, both 3-11. and 11. 41 point over under. Redskins are 2.5 point favorites. Um, the Giants beat the Redskins 24-3 to in week four. Daniel Jones worked with the starters on Wednesday. It should be a rookie battle. Yeah, yeah, I think it'll be Daniel Jones v. Dwayne, uh, Dwayne Washington. Dwayne, Dwayne Haskins. Dwayne Washington, quarterback for... Uh, Might as well be on some of these throws, but Haskins had a big week last week. <laughs> Best game as a pro, 261 passing yards, two touchdowns. Look, if, you, if you're looking for a reason why, you uh, look at the matchup, and yeah. now you've got another matchup that looks really juicy for Dwayne Haskins. I would never in a million years say you play Dwayne Haskins, but it does mean positive things for uh, Terry McLaurin. Yeah, McLaurin is in a good spot here. I mean, last week I bet against McLaurin in a good spot based on Haskins. I thought, you know, I know Philly has been, uh, you know, beatable in their secondary, and I love Terry McLaurin, but I wasn't confident that Haskins can get him the ball in the right situations, and obviously that, that didn't work out. McLaurin had a great game. Well, this is another fantastic matchup. And while Janoris Jenkins has been uh, not a great cornerback this year for the Giants, they cut him and no longer have him. So I can't imagine it gets better for the Giants secondary. So yeah, I'm I'm in on I'm I'm in on Terry on Scary Terry on the F one. Yeah, right now the. Uh Biggest cornerback wide receiver advantage goes to Terry McLaurin on the week of any team facing DeAndre Baker, who's given up uh, seven touchdowns, seven touchdowns Ooh. on the season and the seventh most receiving yards. And Terry McLaurin needs one play. So would you play Terry McLaurin or Will, Will Fuller? I'd play Terry McLaurin. Mm, that's he a vote. You think Haskins is better than Deshaun Watson. You heard it here, <laughs> Andy. Th Ah, uh, that is that was a quote, a direct quote. Mm -hmm. When I said McLaurin, that was a vote for Haskins. A vote for Haskins. It, it kind of was. It was again. a vote against Watson. <laughs> sure, sure. Now Terry McLaurin is just a special player, closing in on a thousand yards in his rookie season with that team. Well, to be fair, most of it came with Case Keenum. Some of it did, yeah. Not last week. Not, Not last week. Last week. But I stand by most of it because yeah. it's fact. Um, no, he's been. Yeah, you're right. You're not wrong. Daniel Jones uh, gets to throw to Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton, and Golden Tate. Every week we're staring down these guys, and you know, two weeks ago Darius Slayton had the big game. Last week Sterling Shepard nine for one eleven. Uh, you just you should be able to play Shepard. I Shepard I feel confident enough to play as a wide receiver three flex type of player. Um, outside of that, you know, Darius Slayton, you can take your shot on a deep touchdown. Slayton's been an impressive rookie. When you talk about, you know, there's a mirror in effect in this game. Yes. With Daniel Jones, Dwayne Haskins, and Terry McLaurin, Darius Slayton. Uh, you know, the over-under is only 42.5 points. A little low for a game that you would hope to be kind of a 3-11 and shootout situation. But um, Terry McLaurin, 
would you play him over Shepard or Slayton? Yes, for oh, okay. sure. I, I'm not confident. I'm I'm uh, nowhere near as confident in, as you are that you can play Sterling Shepard. Sterling Shepard had a good game last week. That's great. It it didn't come with who the quarterback currently is. Um, when the you know when Daniel Jones was around, it was more of the Darius Slayton show. However, when that was happening, Sterling Shepard wasn't playing. He was <laughs> injured and gone. So it's like. And Golden Tate's still there. So who's it going to be? I don't know. And that means I'm out. I mean, okay. that's just the truth. Yeah. It's it's kind of like uh, the same thing with the Jets last week in a bad matchup. It was like, okay, Robbie's their best wide receiver, but is it Crowder? Or, you know, who's who's it going to – I don't know, and I don't want to take the shot. One of those guys is going to have a good game. But nobody saw Crowder having a good game last week. Nobody – who? At least you know McLaurin is the alpha. Exactly. I'm going to go with the, the, the odds-on favorites. Saquon coming off his best performance of the season, going up against the 26th-ranked running defense in Washington. So Saquon's obviously in your lineup. Adrian Peterson has received 20 and 16 carries the last two weeks, goes up against the Giants' defense, his middle of the pack against the run. I've been saying it all week. Peterson's fine to play. Yes. He's, he's totally fine to play. I, I like him more than Carlos Hyde. Oh, for sure. I, I like him more than Carlos Hyde. I think Peterson is a safe floor play because he's going to – they're going to try to get him up to 20 carries. And, I mean, he's he's just still – He's fine. He's still a really good athletic human being. Like, he, Here's a real question for you. If, if, would, would Adrian Peterson be performing better in the Chicago Bears backfield than David Montgomery would? Yes, I genuinely believe that 100%. <sighs> All right, Bengals one and thirteen, Dolphins three and eleven. Ooh, superstar matchup. Yeah, they. Uh, in many leagues, you have your toilet bowl finals, mm -hmm. and this would be in contention for the National Football League's toilet bowl finals. Bengals at one and thirteen, Dolphins at three and eleven. Bengals are one point favorites. Who you picking? Who you got for this game? I have the Bengals. Okay. Yeah, uh, Miami is really, really challenged on defense i mean they just each and every week it's the same old story uh john ross is back tyler boyd i love tyler boyd this week his matchup is outstanding tyler boyd's funny because he he came out i think it was last week they played new england right mm -hmm. and uh he came out and said he won i mean he won over and over again against uh, Stephen I, Gilmore. I did not hear that. He just he won all those matchups. He was getting open and just didn't get the targets. That's not true though. But and Zach Taylor was like, I don't know about that. Like his, <laughs> his own head coach was like, I'm not sure you're right. Because I'm not sure you're right about that. He's not. I mean, I guess it's good. But he's a competitor a wide, as a wide receiver to think you're gonna win. Like believe in yourself. I believe in both Boyd and Ross as surprise plays this week. Believe it or not. Um, with some upside. I mean, this 33.3 fantasy points given up by the Dolphins' defense. Andy Dalton is competent. That's all you need. Competence goes a long way against Miami. If you break up that 33 points, I think about 25 of it at least goes to Boyd and to uh, John Ross. So I just feel confident that Boyd is by far the, the, the better play, but Ross has sneaky upside. Okay. So does do you think Ross has the same upside – that a Will Fuller has, or is Will Fuller's? I actually think it's pretty close. Yeah, I mean, I have more confidence in Will Fuller because I have more confidence in Deshaun Watson, and that matchup is as good as he gets against Tampa Bay. But uh, I do what like if John Ross had Dwayne Haskins though? Would you, well, then, then it's it would, smash it would play in number one, obviously since, overall. Yeah, you love him. I love. Why? No, this is not a thing. Oh, it's a thing. This is not a thing. It just happened. Dwayne, Dwayne, Dwayne Haskins is a bad quarterback. Yes, he is. I want that on record. All right. Um, but Ryan Fitzpatrick on the other side, I mean, Dalton and Fitzpatrick, who do you like more between those two if you're in a two-quarterback streaming situation and you like pain? I, I, well, I, I don't think it's going to be that much pain. I, I like Ryan Fitzpatrick better. He's been – look, he's leading the Dolphins in rushing, and we've talked about this. Rushing yards in fantasy is a, a really, re really valuable thing for quarterbacks. Yeah, but let me illustrate something. If, for instance, I don't know, you and I had uh, a little steps competition around the office, and I and I had like thirty steps, and you had like twenty five steps. I'm the leading. I win. 
I win the prize, right? Do you see what I'm saying? I see what you're I saying. I win, but I still only had like 30 steps. Right. I like see Ryan Fitzpatrick's leading with like the 200s on the year or something of that nature. Yeah, but he has certain games where, you know, he's putting up 40, 50, it 60 does matter. rushing yes. yards. And when you do that, if you, if you get 50 rushing yards, you know, that's that's five extra points as a possible baseline. And if you look at the Bengals specifically and who's beaten them when Kyler and Lamar have had their big games, a lot of that's come from the rushing opportunity given to quarterback. So I, that's that's why I bring it up is because of this matchup. I like Ryan Fitzpatrick here. I think the real headline should be that the leading rusher on the Miami Dolphins has 219 rushing yards. Yes. Yeah, I think that's the real. It's impressive work, what they're doing over there. Um, But Ryan Fitzpatrick is a streaming candidate with a healthy Devontae Parker. Parker has been absolutely outstanding. And when you met the Fitzpatrick Parker connection, it, you know, it's a lot like Jameis. I mean, they're just going to put it in Fitzpatrick's hands to do what he wants to do. And maybe Ryan Fitzpatrick in yet another revenge game, because all his games are revenge games against former teams. It's so fun that he's played against every or played for every single week. There's a note in Ryan Fitzpatrick that just says revenge game. And you don't I, have to take it out. No, I don't think they do. I don't even know that they vet this and that he's ever played for the other team. They just leave it in because it's usually right. Well, he picked the right division, too, because you get you get two Buffalo Bills revenge games. You get two New York Jets revenge games, and now you get Cincinnati. So it's almost every week. Any confidence at all in Patrick Laird? Any, any desire to play him this week no, against I, the Bengals defense? You know, they're at home, Bengals 28th on the year. I'm I'm not excited for Laird. That's another one where I would rather go Adrian Peterson yeah. than Laird, even though Laird gets the passing work and usually passing work is much more valuable than the than the rushing work. I'm going to be putting my confidence in the Hall of Famer rather than the sixth string Dolphins running back. Joe Mixon's the running back four over his last five games. He's, he is a smash this week. He, he's just you, – you watch some of these plays – and he gets yards that no one else in the in the entire NFL would get. He's been so good. What what does this look for? It's just me. I oh, like you, hearing my. You know, you're talking about my Valentine. He, you, you, you have a total man crush right now on Joe Mixon. I do. You watch the games. I know. I, I, I said some your, stupid stuff. I see your smile. I see that glow in your in your on, in your skin. There have been a, there were a couple plays last week where he only ran like a yard or two on the play, but I'd be like, nobody could get that yard or two with Joe Mixon. Yeah, I, I like Joe. I hope they get better because he's going to be great. All right, at tight end. Mike Gesicki has had a double-digit target share in, I think, three or four consecutive weeks. He is not a terrible desperation play at the tight end position. Uh, there are worse options out there. But, you know, hopefully you have better ones. But there are better but options. But there are better options out there. The Saints at 11-3 and three take on the Tennessee Titans. Or as what we said on the, the footcast yesterday, the Tennessee Titans. Oh, the Ryan yes, Tennessee yes. Titans. Because his name's Ryan Tannehill. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, the Titans are 8-6. and six. It's not that good. It's not good. No. The Saints are 11-3. and three. The Saints are three-point favorites on the road. It's a 15.5-point over under. Push coming to shove here. Two very good teams. The Titans just lost uh, last week. And Ryan Tannehill's been absolutely outstanding. So, you know, since week eight, here's fantasy finishes for Tannehill, 13, 11, 5, 11, 2, 22, 6, 4. I mean, that's a top five fantasy quarterback. He's been excellent. And now this is a much more difficult matchup. I mean, if you really look at who Tannehill has played, we haven't really brought that up much, but think about the defenses and if they're good at stopping the quarterback. Houston, obviously not. Oakland, no. Indy's okay. They're pretty good, but then they did kind of stop him. Jacksonville, no. You know, so it's like Kansas it, City, Carolina, Tampa Bay. Yeah, I mean, he's he, doing what he's supposed to do. He gets credit because not every quarterback can come in and do that. Right, but he, you know, he hasn't had a good defense that he's faced. Now the New Orleans Saints are a good defense, but they specialize against the run which is interesting because this is Tennessee is trying to establish dominance with Derrick Henry and run the ball, and then op and that opens up those deep passes to A.J. Brown. It's a 50-and-a-half point over-under, but what's interesting is these two teams, they are slow. Yeah. They, Tennessee's the fourth fewest plays per game. New Orleans is the second slowest. That 
I don't like that. I want more plays, not not fewer plays. Yeah, that's 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 bad news here. And uh, you know, I think I take the under in this game in this fifty and a half points. I can't believe that it's a fifty and a half point line. That just seems. Do you want to mortgage our houses? Oh man, I would love to put my like entire your future future um, <laughs> in jeopardy. <laughs> Oh man! Um, I thought you did that yesterday morning with breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did, and that, I didn't feel good yesterday. That that was that was definitely the joke. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, Alvin Kamara, Derrick Henry. Uh, Derrick Henry was limited on Wednesday's practice. He had 86 touchdown less yards last week, but on the season, oh my gosh, 13. a lot of touchdown less yards. <laughs> Uh, nineteen or sorry, thirteen hundred twenty-nine rushing yards on the season, thirteen touchdowns. You're oh, playing. You're playing. I thought you were talking about Kamara. Oh no, Alvin Kamara is averaging sixteen point one touches per game. We have Henry five, six spots higher than him on the week. We talked about. Was it on yesterday's show that we just talked about Kamara? Not, you know, the dynasty situation yes. with Alvin and whether he's in. He's kind of tier two, tier three running back for dynasty at this point with injuries inconsistency this year and the other options out there that have guaranteed roles in the backfield do you think alvin kamara has been good this year nope what do you think his yards per carry has been oh gosh don't tell me it's like six no it's it's four and a half which is very good it's very good i mean that's you know it's i mean it's no it's just no, two touchdowns that's that's is he going to be underdrafted he might be because touchdowns are the thing that bounces back and forth that you can't always predict. I mean, last year he had 14 rushing touchdowns. That's crazy. Added another four receiving touchdowns. This year he's got one rushing, one receiving. So, you know, th this isn't the uh, best matchup, not the worst matchup. Where is Tennessee's middle of the road here. Um, and I, I think Kamara can get it going. I mean, one thing that was clear, if you watched the Saints game, last week is that they were very actively at home in the Superdome. They were trying to get Drew Brees the record, th the record. I mean, they, there was no, they were not going to run the ball down inside the red zone when Drew Brees could get that touchdown record on primetime TV at home for that crap. Like that was by design, which means I think the opportunities now on the road, you know, this this could very well. Uh, well, he's got to keep that record because he's going up against Brady still. I mean, sure. they're they're neck and neck. If he wants to keep that record, he's going to need to play another twelve years because that's what Brady's going to do. Oh gosh, no, Breeze is playing. I think Breeze plays longer than Brady. No, hundred percent. No, I don't mean like like. Want to take our longest water bed well, of all no, time? No, I mean Breeze has this. <laughs> we'll Breeze, find out in seven years. Who's I mean right. Breeze Breeze is is younger. Yes, he is. I mean, I I don't think that there's any what we've seen from Brady this year. I mean, Drew Brees is 40, what, Brady's 42 or 43? I think, yeah. I, I think Brees is on a field longer than Brady's on a field. Yeah. I disagree wholeheartedly. Really? Yeah. Long term. <laughs> Long term. <laughs> yes. Water bet. I wish you had said you, you disagreed half-heartedly. Mm. Um, Michael Thomas, you should play him. A.J. Brown, he's in your lineup. He's in our top 12, right at wide receiver 12 this week. Uh, he's a 226-pound Deshaun Jackson. <laughs> that's what he is <laughs> i mean he's a, he's a mon monster i like that i yeah. like that a lot and then uh, <laughs> oh nice jared kuk oh jared kuk um spelled c u o o o o o o o k jared? according to uh yeah. i think that's i thought there was a y in there but kuk is yeah i would have thought there player. was a, um a here's y. what's weird about jared kuk is <laughs> Tell me what's weird about him other than his name. So Kuke's been getting it going, and he looks great. When he comes in the game, you 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 see him, they use him, they run him in motion, uh, and and Drew Brees goes to him. That's great. But he only played 42% of the snaps last week. I was really surprised by that, and I don't know if that's just coming back off of uh, injury, getting back out there, but 28 snaps Blowout. Isn't, isn't what I want. Well, but even in a blowout, usually tight ends will stay in there and block. and Not one's coming off a concussion, though. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, that's the narrative I choose. Okay. I think so it gets better this week. You're happy yeah. with Cook. I'm happy with Cook. Okay. I'm even happy with Cook. Cook. Both directions. All right. Um, let's go ahead and get into the starts. 
Shoot starts of the week. Um. All right, who we have starts of the week for Mike. We do. And considering how on fire Mike's been with his rankings the last couple of weeks, uh, we found it important to include him. And obviously, uh, Jay Grizz starts the Bears. Jason Grizz was very disappointed. Yeah. In us for not including him. Your rankings have been trash. However, congratulations, yeah. Cardboard Bear, for your Twitter. What is he at? Over thirty thousand. I believe he is over thirty thousand Twitter followers. At J Grizz FFL. Well, that's why. One Z. Yeah. Um, all right. My quarterback start of the week. It's going to be Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Look, you have to pick your spots with Russell Wilson, and it hasn't. There haven't been many of them lately. But they're fighting to hang on to this number one seed. They're at home, heavily favored against Arizona, a beatable secondary, a situation where now you have Tyler Lockett, who is finally healthy and involved and back. And I think this is a Russell Wilson week, and I want to give you the confidence to put him inside of your lineup. So Russell Wilson is my quarterback start of the week this week. Jason. Yeah, my start of the week is Matt Ryan. He has been a top 10 quarterback each of the last two weeks, um, and he's – going home now to play in his comfy little dome against the Jaguars, a team who is imploding. You've got Austin Hooper, who's been working his way back, but now, you know, three weeks back, he should be completely ready to be a weapon. And, of course, any time that you're going to target Julio Jones over 50%, you're going to have a good day. He should do that all the he time. He should just every week just target. Why, why stop at 51%? I genuinely believe this. This isn't even a joke. I think if he targeted Julio Jones every single play, Every single play, it would still work out. It well, was, look what Drew Brees did. Drew Brees already yes, does this. With, yes, he does with <laughs> Michael Thomas. It's like, why don't you just always go to the best wide receiver? Because they can't guard him. All right, here's Mike. Mike's start of the week at quarterback is Jameis Winston. Scary. So if I were Mike and I was remote, as he is, uh, not here, not present, there's a bear in his stead, I would take – the riskiest starts of the week it's the perfect because time. we can't call him out on anything. Now, Jameis, since week five, only twice have the tech, Texans not given up a top 12 week to the quarterback position. We talked about it earlier. The matchup's beautiful. And um, I said it earlier. I have confidence in Jameis this week, so I don't, I don't mind the play. Okay, so I am curious because I'm curious in my own head. I, I'm looking at my rankings. I'm not sure if I agree with them. I'm toiling here. Mine and Mike's starts of the week. If you had... Jameis Winston and Matt Ryan in your championship matchup, who would you start? The guy that's been on absolute fire but has lost his weapons or Matt Ryan who's been okay and, you know, is still down. He doesn't have Ridley, doesn't have Sanu. Yeah, I, I like Matt Ryan a lot this week. I'm starting him in a championship game myself. I think I'd play Jameis Winston. I hope you're right. I hope for the foot clan. But I think they Jameis. both have great weeks. Well, good. But that's good because they're I don't both think Ryan, of the week. It's not at the expense of Ryan. Right. Yeah. Uh, running back start of the week, it's the man Matt Ryan is going to be handing the ball off to, Devonta Freeman. Listen to this. Jacksonville has given up a top 12 running back performance for six consecutive weeks. You know that Devonta Freeman will get 15 carries. You know he will get four receptions. The problem has been the matchups and the situations that he's been put in is those are not high-value carries or high value receptions he they're very high value against Jacksonville so I think Devonta Freeman's an important name to bring up in championship week because you're making flex decisions and you know he's on the bench of your team or somebody else in that in that yeah. territory you're saying uh, do I go Freeman or you know do I go with somebody like Brashad Perryman where would you go there I would go Freeman. Look, two weeks ago, I, I'm I'm Mister. You know, I'm I don't like Devonta Freeman this year. I've been outspoken against him. Uh, two weeks ago, when Mike picked him as the start of the week against Carolina, because Carolina's rushing defense was so bad, I I wanted to speak poorly of Freeman. And you always worried. do, yeah. But it was a clear and obvious start, and Freeman came through uh, that week against uh, Carolina. This is another great matchup. So my start of the week, piggybacking off of that, is talking about how bad Carolina's been at stopping the run. Their personnel can't do it. They are the worst in football, statistically, not opinion. They are trash against stopping the run. Look at Chris Carson last week, right? You're guaranteed top five play because he was all alone and he got to play against Carolina. 
Marlon Mack has been super disappointing. The last two weeks coming off of the injury, he's been in the like 40% snap counts, and they clearly got blown out by the Saints this last week, so it wasn't a good Marlon Mack game script to be on the field to do anything against a great rushing defense. But against Carolina, at home in Indy, in a game where Carolina is starting Will Greer and they are not going to just do what the Saints did to them, Marlon Mack will be the reason the Colts win this game, and I think he's going to have a, a, a great week. He's another one of those guys that I think it's important to bring up because he's questionable. He's on your bench. You're you're not wanting to start him. I would start him with without hesitation. Well, I hope it's without hesitation to be a start of the week. I have my own concerns. When a team is going in the opposite direction, the way that the Colts are doing it, and then the goal line carry last week for Jordan Wilkins. It was 45% snaps for Mar Mar Marlon Mack, 43% for Wilkins last week. I know it was a blowout. But – that was just, I do have my concerns. That was just uh, the reason it was uh, Wilkins. It wasn't like it was they a throw. Chose. It was a throwaway touchdown. It was that that whole drive. Marlon Mack was out of the game already. Okay, and so it was, right. it was Wilkins the whole drive, and they got down to the goal line, and it was. Just I think it's an important game. name to bring up because if you have confidence in him, a lot of people don't. Right, including uh, my own question. So it's an important Mike, important name to get you going. Mike has Miles Sanders. The matchup is not great. But that doesn't really matter. Miles Sanders is getting the job done. He's the running back eight since he got the job when Jordan Howard's been out. Um, you know, a, a couple weeks ago. I like you, the targets. Yeah, I mean, well, he's just – he's. I don't think people realize he's actually become a workhorse back. Even with Boston Scott getting some dump-offs, Sanders is in the game a, a, a large – uh, percentage of their offensive snaps he's been very good he's used in the passing game in the running game he's used at the goal line uh I, I you know I think Philly's gonna lean on him in a game that really matters he's been averaging 15 attempts five targets and 95 yards per game since he's been a full-time running back so he's a guy that should be started in most leagues all right my wide receiver start of the week is Tyler Boyd Tyler Boyd my goodness I mean the matchup is just too juicy against Miami they are so insanely bad against the wide receiver position. The last five weeks in fantasy points given up to wide receivers, fifth, first, fifth, sixth, sixth. They just can't stop the pass. And there's going to be, a, you know, you like Ryan Fitzpatrick, right? This game between a couple of bottom dwellers is going to be one through the air. Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to put up enough points to uh, make Andy Dalton throw the football a little bit. And Tyler Boyd has one of the best cornerback matchups of the week. Hmm. So I think that you're in a position where Tyler Boyd's going to have a really, really solid game and you haven't been able to have confidence hmm. in him. Interesting. Interesting. You think that's going to happen? Well, on the other side of the field is my start of the week. It's not Michael Gallup anymore. Thanks, Dak. It is Devontae Parker. I mean, at this point, he's just been week in, week out. His target share is too high. For him to, uh, like, the, the Bengals aren't, surprisingly, they're not a great wide receiver matchup. They, you know, they're they're decently tough, um, mostly because you could just run all over them. But the Dolphins can't run, and with that kind of a percentage snap count, you can't take Parker out of your lineup. Since he He's has, the wide receiver four yeah, exactly. in the last eight weeks. I mean, that's just not a guy that you, you bench. So going into your championship, you might have bigger names. You know, we've got... In in our yeah league, Amari Cooper in you our league thinking one. about Amari Cooper Amari Cooper or Devontae Parker Robert so, Woods or Devontae Parker those are our three wide receivers and Devontae Parker is in now it's like who else yes he's locked and loaded guaranteed Mike is going with Cortland Sutton and the home matchup against the Lions and I really don't mind it I think Drew Locke's going to have a surprisingly nice game at home against Detroit uh, we know David Blau is going to be out there again. Three out of the last five weeks, Detroit has given up top two points on the week to the opposing team's wide receiver core. So it th their core is Cortland Sutton, in case you're curious. That's yes. their entire wide receiver core. So he's a really, really good player. This is a week where you can start him with confidence, at least according to Mike Wright. And then the tight end start of the week, I'm going to go with Hunter Henry. It has been rough for Hunter Henry owners who thought they had a week-in, week-out, guaranteed, consistent starter. Look, a lot of those situations, the Hunter Henry, Austin Hoopers, you've had to make a lot of pivots and changes and adjustments to your tight end position at the end of this season. Uh, but I think a big game against Oakland is on the way for Hunter Henry. Uh, he's had two finishes outside the top 40, so that's the tough sledding I'm talking about. 
with the last game against Oakland, he was a top 10 tight end. I was back in week 10, and I just think it's going to be a very good situation for Henry at home against Oakland, who just gives up a lot of points. Yeah, I'm, and my start of the week is Jacob Hollister. Uh, you might not realize it, but since he took over the starting role, he's averaging, and this is in all matchups, 6.2 targets a game. At tight end, that's a pretty good number. Now you take those 6.2 targets, you say, you get to do that against Arizona. Yeah, that's when the font size increases. The those font tar- size those increases, targets. And, the, and more importantly, the touchdowns increase. Uh, last time that uh, Russell Wilson played the Arizona Cardinals, it was just Will Disley open by scheme over and over and over. And now Jacob Hollister gets to play that role. He's my start of the week. Uh, Mike's start of the week at tight end is O.J. Howard. We talked about him today. He's averaging four for 60 over the last three weeks. That is a good baseline to then have the upside with no Evans or Godwin for Howard to stay busy, hopefully get in uh, the end zone. And over the last five weeks, the Texans are giving up the second most points per game to the tight end position. All right. Are you ready for um, the least important? Oh, this is a hard one. Impor- uh, most important segment Super of the year. Super difficult one. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed boom, boom, kicker of the week. It's championship week, so don't be a sucker. Okay. You know the best kicker. It's the Ravens, Justin Tucker. Okay. Easy yeah. peasy. Easy peasy. Um, you heard it here first, guys. To t- pick up Justin Tucker off of your waiver wire. Hey, look, the boom and boom. And finally put him into your lineup for the, the boom first boom time this week. Is <laughs> very rarely a waiver wire pickup. It's just someone that you know. It's like I'm yeah, not sure. It's, it's someone that rhymes. That's all it is. That's <laughs> all it is. And this week. You don't want to be a sucker. All right. We'll hit the rest of the matchups on tomorrow's show. We'll have ballers on a budget. And um, don't forget Sunday Live, one hour before Sunday kickoff on all of the social media channels. I think it could be Mike this week. It could be you, Jason. You <sighs> could uh, The mystery, that's part of the fun. That it, is part of the There'll be a reveal. Tune in. And then uh, the game day alerts over at jointhefoot.com, our fantasy football community. Over 10,000 of you, lots of opportunities to connect. Um, get together for leagues, uh, get together on the community forums, on the Discord channels, all of that good stuff and all the benefits that come with being a jointhefoot.com member. Uh, Brooks, Al, I, I did have a question for you since I see you in that hat every single day. Are you a serious Christmas truther, Brooks? Are you all about it? Yeah. Do you nice. do the Christmas movie? Like, How many Christmas movies do you go through in the month of December? Is that part of the routine? Yeah, I usually try and get all the classics in. Have home, it, what's the most the recent one, one you've watched? Uh, most recent was uh, Jim Jim Carrey Grinch. I, Very nice. I've never seen that. That's just stupid, man. I <laughs> grow, grow up. I have never seen that. I love the cartoon also, the classic. Yeah, yeah I thought good. about buying that. You know what I didn't love? The new one. The new, like, 3D animated... Uh, didn't they just delete that? From existence? Yeah, with, with what's his face? With the Doctor Strange. Cumberbatch? Yeah. No good? Yeah, it was yeah, Do you yeah. watch the Christmas movies? Yeah. Do you of guys course. go through like is that a there's never been a December since Elf came out that we haven't watched Elf. Mm. And then there's usually a, another every year they make some uh, you know, Christmas movie that's new. You know, Noel on Netflix this year. We watched it because uh, you gotta do it. Yeah. All right. So you're pretty you're pretty into the Christmas traditions, right? Yeah, that's it. So. We gotta find some new ones. It's our it's our t- time as a family to like lead the Christmas traditions of our extended family, and I we need something special. Yeah, you've got nothing right now, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I'm so just, that's I, I. I just want something new. I was just I'm petitioning for ideas. Yeah, maybe Bookland. I, maybe people have like very special traditions that they started up, and they're like, "This is legit. Well, I could, send us I your could legit. sell this." Oh, then give it to us. <laughs> we'll sell it. All right, we want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, a Cortland Sutton signed mini helmet, $46.68 yesterday. That is cheap, and he's a start of the week. So How much? $46. That is a good deal. Uh, you can use the code BALLERS at pristineauction.com to browse hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. Well, that'll do it. That'll do it for today. Jay Grizz says farewell, and... Um, 
No Thursday night football. It's 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 strange. That is a little. But weird. we'll be on Sirius this afternoon and back with the show tomorrow. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan. Don't forget this very special and important message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Look, you know the risks of driving drunk this holiday season. There could be a crash, people can get hurt or even killed. You can get arrested. You can incur huge legal expenses and possibly even lose your job. Look, you know the consequences of driving drunk, and you're wrong if you think it's no big deal. A reminder to drive sober or get pulled over.